Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis, the channel where we look at complex organic chemistry and explain how it works. This week, we're going to look at the late stage and strain accelerated oxidation enabled synthesis of Haomine A by the Chen group. Haomine A is an alkaloid which belongs to a class of compounds known as cyclophanes. Cyclophanes are macrocyclic compounds which contain an aromatic ring within the macrocycle. The macrocyclic ring introduces a lot of strain on the aromatic system by bending it out of planarity. This gives the compounds very unusual physical properties and chemical reactivities. As such, these are very attractive but incredibly difficult targets for total synthesis. Haomine A has attracted a lot of attention within the synthesis community, with several reports of semi and formal syntheses and two reports of total syntheses, both by the Baran group. The synthesis which we are looking at today takes advantage of this ring strain and uses it to accelerate an oxidation reaction which completes the bent aromatic ring. This is just one highlight among many in this interesting and difficult synthesis. So let's look at the retrosynthesis. The authors envisioned the final stages of the synthesis will be the aromatization of an enone group to install the strained aromatic ring. This will be derived from a macrocyclization of an amine and an alkyl group. This macrocyclization is a key and difficult reaction step in the sequence. The authors envisioned that using an alkyl chain with sp3 hybridized carbons would give the molecule enough flexibility to be able to overcome the enthalpic and entropic barriers to form the transition state to form the macrocycle. Disconnecting this macrocyclization precursor back, we get two fragments, a carboxylic acid and an amino alcohol fragment. The amine group on this fragment could be installed using an intramolecular azeroadenation reaction. Ultimately, this fragment will be derived from a diazo insertion reaction into the benzocyclobutanol compound shown in the slide. With the retrosynthesis covered, let's dive into the synthesis of the first fragment, the amino alcohol. An organolithium nucleophile was generated from the reaction of tributyl tin benzyl ether and n butyl lithium. This attacked the benzocyclobutanone to form a tertiary alcohol. This tertiary alcohol then underwent a diazo insertion reaction to install the aromatic ester group. This was catalyzed by a rhodium cyclooctadiene compound. Let's take a look at this diazo insertion reaction in detail. The catalyst first binds to the hydroxyl group on the molecule. This tethers it in place and allows it to undergo a beta carbon elimination. This reaction breaks the strained cyclobutane carbon carbon bond and leaves the rhodium bonded to the aromatic ring. This then forms a carbene by inserting into the diazo compound together with the elimination of nitrogen gas. With the two substrates now bound to the rhodium, a migratory insertion reaction occurs, coupling them together and forming a new carbon-carbon bond. An intramolecular aldol addition then occurs, forming the second carbon-carbon bond. Protonation then generates the product and leaves the rhodium catalyst free to react further. We've seen rhodium catalyzed diazo insertion reactions before in this channel, so if you're interested in other creative uses of this type of chemistry, look at the video of Lycanostine B. With this ring expansion process now complete, the authors turned their attention towards installing the ketone group. First, the benzyl ether was deprotected using palladium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. This unmasked a 1,2-diol motif, which could then undergo oxidative cleavage using bis-acetoxyiodobenzene. This mechanism is similar to the malaprade reaction. The primary alcohol acts as a nucleophile in the iodine center, which eliminates an acetate group. Binding of the second alcohol group generates a five-membered ring, which can then undergo a fragmentation reaction, producing the target ketone. The next stage of the sequence 
was to form a triflet enol ether. Formation of an enolate with KHDMS formed the nucleophile, which was then reacted with N-phenyl bis-trifluoromethansulfinamide, which is an alternative to the more commonly used Cummins reagent. With the triflate formed, they could then proceed to carry out a transfer hydrogenation. This proceeds by the oxidative insertion of a palladium zero catalyst into the oxygen carbon bond. The reaction of an ammonium formate salt with this complex transfers a hydride to the palladium centre, together with the elimination of carbon dioxide gas. Beta hydride elimination then transfers this hydride to the substrate and regenerates the palladium zero catalyst. The ester was then reduced using lithium aluminium hydride. Activation of the ester by coordination to the lithium cation increases the electrophilicity and allows the aluminium hydride to add in a nucleophilic fashion. This occurs twice to fully reduce the ester down to a primary alcohol. With the alcohol installed, the authors turned their attention towards the installation of an aziridine sulfamate. Chlorosulfonyl isocyanate was reacted with the alcohol, which installed a sulfanamide group upon workup with pyridine. Reaction of this sulfanamide with a rhodium catalyst and oxidizing reagent promoted the insertion of the amine into the double bond to form the target aziridine sulfamate. Let's look at this reaction in detail. We can try to understand this reaction by looking at mechanistic studies of similar CH insertions. Nitrogen acts as a nucleophile towards bis-cetoxyiodobenzene. Deprotonation with the liberated acetate ultimately forms a nitrogen-iodine double bond. This species can then coordinate to the rhodium catalyst. In this case, a dinuclear species with bridging octanoate ligands. The structure of the catalyst highly influences its reactivity. The bridging octanoate ligands hold the two metal centres in close proximity, allowing them to be electronically coupled, and for the second rhodium atom to act as an electron sink. Coordination of this catalyst promotes the elimination of iodobenzene, together with the formation of a singlet nitrine, a species which reacts similar to a carbene. The pi electrons of the carbon-carbon double bond overlap with the empty orbital on the nitrine species. This forms two new carbon-nitrogen bonds with simultaneous breaking of the nitrogen-rhodium bond. This is an asynchronous concerted mechanism where the bonds form and break at the same time, though not at the same rate. Overall, this reaction inserts nitrogen into the carbon-carbon double bond and forms the aziridine. Reduction with hydrogen gas and palladium on carbon opened this aziridine ring to form the cyclic sulfonamide. Further reduction with aluminium hydride reduced the sulfonamide and, upon workup, ultimately yielded the desired 1,3 amino alcohol fragment. The completion of this fragment brings us to the end of the first stage of this synthesis. Tune in next week where we will look at the rest of the synthesis and the completion of how amine A. This will include the synthesis of fragment 2 using a directed CH alkenylation reaction, an interesting macrocyclization reaction and several different oxidation reactions required to generate the highly strained cyclophane motif. If you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe, and if you have anything you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments down below.